Nile, look how they run. Fed by melt from pure white snow, the river swells and soaks the Egyptian fields in place of Zeus's downward pour. King Proteus ruled this country here, at least while he was living. He went to Samathe, one of the maids amid the sea swell, but only after she forsook the office's bed. Two children she bore in that home of his, Theoclymenus, her son, and noble Edo, her mother's delight when but a babe. But when Edo bloomed in youth and reached her marriage season, they called her <coughs> Theanoe, God-minded, since her forefather's gift had passed to her. For like Nereus before her, she knew the sacred present and future. She knew it all. And I? My fatherland is not entirely unknown. Sparta. My father was Tyndareus. Though some have said that Zeus flew to my mother, cloaked in swan skin, feigning a flight from an eagle's pursuit. Oh, he made for her a treacherous bed if the story is true. Helen, I was called. I would tell you of my suffering. Three goddesses, Hera, Aphrodite of Cyprus, and Athena, the Zeus-sprung maid, came to Paris, a Trojan prince, in a day in veil, to prove their charm in a tournament of beauty. But Aphrodite offered my beauty, if ill omens can be beautiful. <laughs> for Paris to marry, and thus she won the match. So Paris left behind his ox stalls and came to Sparta to seize my bed. But Hera, stung by her loss to the Cypriot and Athena, blew barren winds into my marriage and gave not me, but a breathing phantom double molded from the sky to King Priam's son. So. Paris imagines he has me, an empty apparition, but does not. And Zeus adds further misery to woe. War he heaved onto the Greeks and the woeful Trojans to unburden Mother Earth of her massed multitude of mortals and to reveal the bravest man in all of Greece. I was offered up a test of Trojan courage and a spear prize for the Greeks. Not I myself, that is. Just my name. <laughs> but Zeus did not forget me. Hermes swept me high into the sky coves, and concealing me in a cloud, brought me to the house of Proteus, whom he judged the most righteous of all men, to keep my bed unsullied for my husband, Menelaus. So, here I am. But my poor husband <coughs> sailed his levied men to Troy citadels to win me back by force. Oh, so many lives were lost in the flood of Scamander's stream because of me. And even after all I've suffered, I'm cursed by those who think I've betrayed my husband, that I've slung this loathsome war on the Greeks. And why live on? Hermes prophesied. I have heard that I will live again in Sparta's splendid plains with my dear husband after he has come to know that I did not go to Troy if I don't spread my bedsheets for another man. <laughs> now, when King Proteus looked on daylight, I had asylum from all bedroom predators. But now he's buried, cloaked in the shadows of the earth and the dead king's son is hunting me for his wife. So, to honor my old husband, to keep my bed safe for him, I have fallen on Proteus's tomb as a suppliant. No shame will touch my body here, even if my name is infamous throughout Greece. Who has power over these fortified halls? The god of wealth himself, I bet, has a house like this. Royal palace walls. Oh, nice ease on the sanctuary, too. Oh, gods! What do I see? I behold the form of the most hateful woman, she who betrayed me and all the Greeks. May the gods spit you out for all your likeness to Helen. Oh, if I were not standing on foreign soil, 
You would have died from this well-trained arrow for so resembling Zeus's daughter. Unlucky stranger, why do you turn away from me? Why scorn me for the pain that woman caused? <laughs> My mistake. I gave in to rage more than I should have. See, all of Greece hates the daughter of Zeus. Forgive me, lady, for the things that were said. But who are you? From what land are you visiting this one? I am one of the wretched Achaeans, my lady. Well, then no wonder you hate Helen. But again, who are you, and where have you come from? Whom might I call your father? Tukros is my name. Palamon is my father. Oh, and Salamis, the land that nourished me. What brings you to the land of the Nile? I was driven out of my native land in exile. Oh, poor man. Who casts you from your fatherland? Oh, Talamon, who sired me? We should have been a better friend. But why? It sounds a pretty tragic business. My brother Ajax ruined me by dying in Troy. How? <laughs> Surely he didn't die by your sword, did he? <laughs> Falling on his own sword did he mean. Had he lost his mind? What sane man would do such a thing? Have you heard of a certain Achilles? Peleus' son? Sure. He came to woo Helen once. Or, so I hear. <laughs> <laughs> In dying, he set up a contest for his arms among his comrades. And this so tormented Ajax? How? When another man took the armor, he took his own life. I see. You are afflicted by his anguish. Yes! <laughs> because I didn't die with him. Did you truly go to the famed city of Ilium, stranger? I did, and I was ruined along with it. Have flames taken the city? Has Ilium been completely razed? So that not even a trace of the walls can be made up. Oh, wretched Helen. The Trojans said they're ruined because of you. And Achaeans, too. Great evils have been done. How long since the city is ruined? Oh, nearly seven years hard, disciples. How long were you at Troy before that? Oh, many moons on and on for ten years. This, uh, this Spartan woman, did you take her to? <coughs> Menelaus dragged her up by the hair. Did you actually see the miserable woman, or is this hearsay? I saw her with my own eyes, no less than I see you now. And you're sure it wasn't some? Apparition from the gods? Change the subject, no more of her. But you're sure her appearance was reliable? I saw her with my own eyes. I see her still, in my mind's eye. Does that mean that Menelaus is home now, with his wife? He is neither in Argos nor by the streams of the Eurotas. Oh, that's dreadful news. Ah, oh, for, for whomever it would be, dreadful news. They say he disappeared with his spouse. But didn't the Argives take the passage homeward all as one? They did, but a storm separated them in various directions. On which backs of the Salty Sea? <coughs> as they were crossing Mid-Sea, the Aegean Passage. And after that, does anyone know of Menelaus' arrival? No! But it is known throughout Greece that he died. Mother lady? Oh, she's dead and gone. Not slain by Helen's tarnished name. So they say she fastened her well born neck a new. And the Tyndarian sons cast her in Pollux? Did they live or not? Oh, they died. And not died. There are two accounts. But which bows better? I'm worn out by this misery. They say the twins have been made like stars and are gods. That would be good news, at least. <laughs> but the other account? Is that they killed themselves because of their sister. Oh, but no more stories. I know to double my tears. I came to this royal house to meet Theonoe, chanter of the God's will. Help me to arrange a visit so that I can learn from the oracle how I must sail my ships to reach the secret land of Cyprus. There, Apollo foretold that I should make my home, calling the settlement by the island name of Salamis, for the sake of my far off native land. Well, the voyage itself will show you, stranger. The time! You have to!
to go. Flee this land before he gets a sight of you. That son of Proteus, this country's king, is away hunting now, exulting with his trusty hounds and beast butchering bloodshed. Oh, he kills every last Greek traveler he gets his hands on. But why would he? You don't want to know, so don't bother asking, and I'm not talking because what good would it do you? Very good point, madam. <laughs> May the gods give you full return for your kindness. You may have a body like them. <laughs> oh, but your minds are not the same. <laughs> They're very different, indeed. Oh, may she perish utterly and not come to the streams of the Eurotas. Oh, but you. <laughs> may your fortunes always be good. As I build up to a great lamentation for sorrow so great, for what kind of wailing am I to contend? What muse to approach with teardrops or threnody or public mourning? Every winging women young, maidens of the underworld, silent, I pray you might join to. Thank you. 
I know you suffer hardships deep, yet mark my words. It's best to bear lightly light in things of life, life you can't avoid. To what fate was I chained, my friend? Did my mother bear me as a freak among mankind? No woman, no Greek, no barbarian gives birth to her baby in an eggshell cask, as they say, Leda bore me to Zeus. I suppose my life and affairs have been a freak. Partly because of Hera, but my own beauty is also to blame. I wish that I'd been wiped clean, like a statue, to be newly painted, and instead of beauty, had an uglier face. And that the Greeks had overlooked my present evil fortunes and were remembering the good, the way they now dwell on the bad. When someone suffers a crisis from the gods and is distressed, it's a burden, yes, but bearable all the same. With me, I'm wrapped in many sorrows. First, though I've done nothing wrong, my name is loathed. It's so much worse to be scorned for things you haven't done than to suffer honest charges. And then, the gods have transported me from my homeland to these barbarian haunts and stripped me of my loved ones. And what's more, even though I'm free by birth, I'm now a slave. For all barbarians are slaves except for one. But one anchor steadied me in hardship, that my husband would come one day and deliver me from this grief. But he is dead. He is no more. And my mother is slain, and I am her killer. How unjust, though injustice is mine to bear. And my daughter's, my glory, my house's glory, grows gray as an unwed maid. And the two sons of Zeus, the so-called Dioscoroi, live no longer. Since all I have is ill-starred, I am as good as dead, though actually alive. Why, then, should I live on? What fortune do I have left? To choose marriage as an escape from suffering and live with that barbarian husband seated at his loaded table? But when a hated husband goes with a woman, even her own body becomes hateful. So, it's best to die. How would that not be noble for me? For I have come to such a death of woe. While other women have been blessed by beauty, this very thing has ruined us. Who is this stranger Helen just arrived? You cannot believe his every word is true. But he said it so clearly. My husband is dead. Many things are said clearly in a deceiving tongue. 
Yes, and the reverse can be true as well. You say these things headed onto Miss Morrison's path, not headed into good. Yes, for fear besets me, driving me to that dreaded thought. Do those in this house hold you in favor and goodwill? All our friends, all save the man who hunts my hand in marriage. And hear what you must do. First, you must leave this tomb site seat. What are you saying? What kind of commander advice is this? Go to the one who knows all things, the august maiden, born of Nereus's line, say on away. Inquire whether your husband still lives or else he's left the light. And then, once you know for sure, rejoice or else bewail your fate. If you don't know the facts for sure, what good comes of grieving? Trust me then. I will gladly go into the house of you and gladly hear the virgin's prophecy. For women must with women toil. Charioteer, contender once with Oinimaeus in the Pisan games, how I wish your offering to the gods had been complete. That you left this life before your son Atreus, whom you sired, begot upon Iropi, Agamemnon, and me, Menelaus, a famous team. It was the greatest of all expeditions, I believe, and I say this without boasting, <laughs> that I carried across against the walls of Troy young men of Greece, not as a tyrant, but freely followed. We may call the role of those who are not still in life 
a number of those who escaped the sea to bring home the names of the dead. Yet I have been wandering fruitlessly upon the gray back of the salty sea, struggling homeward while ignored by the gods. When I neared my country, the vexed and jealous winds thwarted me, sent me off to this friendless country, like desolate rock-strewn shores of Libya, where I was shipwrecked and all my friends were lost. From the wreckage I gained the ship's keel, and against all odds reached land, myself and Helen, whom I dragged from Troy. I do not know this kingdom nor its folk, and I was too embarrassed to be seen ragged, improvident, and unlucky. A man of my prominence finds ill luck more taxing than those used to misfortune. Need is too much for me. We have no food, no appropriate clothing to my skin, as you may surmise, seeing this wretched stuff flotsam from the ship I now must wear. All my treasure, all my resplendent robes the sea has stolen, and now in a cavern's depth I have hidden the woman who caused these ills, along with my surviving friends kept safe. Now I'm here to scrounge what I can, provisions to take back to those I left behind. I saw the shining gables of this mansion, the massive gates of some commanding man, and now I am come as do sailors importunate, seeking charity from rich, not poor abodes. Impoverished men could not help even if they would. Hey, Dorman, will you announce my visit? Who's at the gate? Get away from this house! Don't loiter around the courtyard and bother my master. If you do, you'll be executed. You're a Greek, and Greeks have no business here. Sure. <laughs> Sure, since you put it so kindly, old woman, I guess I'll have to obey, but ease up on the edge. Go away! <laughs> it's my job, stranger, to make sure no Greek gets anywhere near this house. Keep your hands off me and don't push me. This is on you. You aren't listening to me. Go within and announce me to your master. I think you'll be very sorry. If I do take your message inside. I come, a shipwrecked stranger requiring aid. Then go to some other house, not this one. No, I will go with him and you will obey me. You're being a real pain. <laughs> Soon you'll be forced to me. Uh, where is the army that won me great fame? So it seems you're a big shot somewhere, <laughs> but not here. Oh, Destiny, you have brought me low, all undeserved. Are you crying? <laughs> you think someone should feel sorry for you? Whose estate is this? Who runs the great house? This is the house of Proteus. The land is Egypt. Egypt? What cursed fortune sailed me here? Why complain? What's the Nile's gleaming beauty ever done to you? It's not the Nile's fault. It's just sad soliloquy. Plenty of people <laughs> have problems. You're not the only one. Will you name the master of this kingdom? He is buried here. His son is now king. Is he within the house or traveling abroad? He's not home, and he hates Greeks. What have I done that I should suffer this? Helen, Zeus's daughter, is inside the palace. What? This makes no sense. What was that again? Tyndareus' 
daughter. She was in supply at once. Where did she come from? Can you explain? Oh, she came here from there. Sparta, the lack of devotee land. When? Has my wife been stolen from the tree? A stranger. Before the Greeks ever sailed to Troy, she came here. <laughs> but get away from this house. Something's happened and everything's a chaotic mess. <laughs> you come at a bad time. <laughs> if my master catches you, the only hospitality you get is death. I'm actually well disposed to Greeks, by the way. <laughs> For all the harsh words I spoke in fear of my master. What am I to think? My miseries continue on and on since she tells me my once abducted wife, brought from Troy and well guarded in a cave, is here. Maybe it is some strange woman with the same name that lives in this house. <laughs> Surely she said it was a child of Zeus. Perhaps some man named Zeus lives by this <laughs> The only Zeus I know lives in heaven, and there is no Sparta except where streams combine to make Eurotus reed and bed. The name Tyndarius is known around the world. There is only one, only one place resounding with the lame Lacedaemonia, only one place called Troy, surely. I don't know what to think. In this great world, perhaps are many places called the same as others. Many men with the same name, cities like cities, women like women. It's nothing wonderful, nothing odd at all. I won't leave just because the servant threatens. There could be no man so barbarous as to hear my name and refuse me food. Famous is the burned citadel of Troy, and I, Menelaus, set it all ablaze. There is no place where my name is unknown. I'll await the Lord. I have two lines of defense. If he be savage, I'll hide and strike back to the wreck, but if ye be kind, I'll requisition what dire circumstances made me crave. This is the worst of all my problems. Being a king myself and looking to another king for help. Still, necessity offers us no choice. I didn't make that up, but it sounded Wanderings. And 
one thing she didn't say, whether or not he'll survive once he gets here. I couldn't bring myself to ask. I was so overjoyed by the news he was safe. She says he's near this land, cast up and shipwrecked, with just a few companions. Oh, when will you come? How sweet would your arrival be? <gasps> Who is this man? Am I being ambushed by that scheming, godless son of Proteus? Quick now, to the tomb, like a nimble colt or a holy bucket. To you, reaching now in such a fearful way to the pile of great and burnt stones of the pious day. What do you flee? This body has shocked me. Do you abuse? Women, this man is keeping me from the tomb. He wants to seize me, hand me over to the king I refuse to marry. I am no thief or servant to bad men. Well, you have got a pretty shabby outfit on. <laughs> Hold up, stay for hasty folks. I will. Now that I've reached this tomb. What is your name, lady? On whose face do I gaze? Well, who are you? We both have the same question. I have never seen a form so like the hand. Oh, gods. For recognizing one's loved ones is also divine. Are you Greek or a native of this land? A Greek. But I want to know about you, too. You are more like heaven than anyone I ever saw. And you're so much like Menelaus. I don't know what to say. And you have rightly recognized a man of cursed fortune. At long last, you've come to the arms of your wife. Wife? What wife? And hands off my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the wife my father Tyndarius gave you. Oh, torch-bearing Hecate, send me kindly visions. You're seeing me, not some nocturnal specter of the crossroads goddess. I'm one husband. I can't have two wives. What other wife are you master of? The one I hid in the cave, the one I'm bringing back from Troy. You have no wife but me. Am I crazy? <laughs> Perhaps my vision is blurred. Don't you believe your eyes? Don't you see your wife? You look like her, but facts don't lie. Look at me. What better proof do you need? You are just like her. I can't deny it. Who will be your teacher if not your eyes? They must be deceased, for I already have another wife. You mean you'll abandon me and go off with the phantom bride? With sweet farewell, for you are so alike to Helen. I'm ruined. After getting you, I will not keep my husband. The magnitude of my toils at Troy persuades me. You do not. Oh, I'm boy who has suffered more than I. My beloved husband is leaving me, and I shall not come to Greece, nor ever to my native land. Menelaus! <coughs> oh, Menelaus! I have just come searching after you, wandering all over this barbarian land, sent by your companions left behind. What now? The barbarians haven't robbed the crew, have they? It is a miracle! Oh, that word doesn't do it justice. Speak, your haste foretells strange tidings. I mean, you have suffered countless troubles in vain. That's crying over old news. Anything else? <laughs> your wife has gone up into the folds of the air, lifted out of sight. She is hidden in the sky, abandoning the holy cave where we were guarding her with these parting words. Oh, you wretched Phrygians and all you Achaeans, for my sake, you went on dying on Scamander's banks, as here applauded, thinking that Paris had Helen when he did not. But I, since I have remained here until the time was right and fulfilled my destined role, I now return to my native heaven. Poor Tyndarius' daughter has suffered a bad reputation through no fault of her own. Hello. Oh! <laughs> daughter of Leah! So this is where you've been hiding. Just saying how you've gone up into the story, that's it. I had no idea you had such a winged body. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let you pull this trick again. You caused enough trouble at Troy for your husband and his fellow warriors. I see. I understand. Her story is true. Oh, long desired day that gives you to my arms to hold. <laughs> Dearest of men, Menelaus, how very long I've waited, but at last delight is now at hand. I'm overjoyed, my friends, to hold you close again, and wrap my loving arms around his body after so many. 
my house from top on down. You yourself, this affair ruined and myriads of Greeks with their weapons abroad. And we so far from my country, me evil fain in a curse. So God expel me from safety, so God expel me from a few. When Paris and Paris told that I left the share this joy with me. I'm just learning about it myself, but I don't quite understand it. <laughs> sure, then, old fellow, share in the story yourself. Isn't this woman responsible for all of our troubles at Tor Troy? Not this one. We were <laughs> tricked by the gods. We held but a bit of cloud within our hands. What? <laughs> we had all that trouble for nothing but a cloud? <laughs> This was Hera's doing, and the strife of three goddesses. So, so this woman is truly your wife? The very <laughs> one. You may take my word on it. Oh, daughter. What a complex thing is God. Requires a fathom. He manages to twist things up so thoroughly, arranging them this way and that. One man suffers, another does not, but meets with a bad end, with nothing short of his fortune. You and your husband did suffer many misfortunes. You from people's blameful words about you. Him for his eagerness for the spear. So <laughs> <laughs> zealous that he strove to rescue you, he got nothing. But now he has spontaneous blessings. I see that you did not bring shame to your old father and brothers. And you did not do those things people said about you. <laughs> <laughs> Come then, old fellow. You have shared my task, stood by my shield, and supported me during hard times. Share now in my good fortune. Take the news back to the companions we have left. How our fortune has changed. Tell them to await me at the seashore and to look for what trials of strength await me, as I expected. We can win my wife away from here somehow. And to be on guard for some way that, by combining our fortunes, we may be rescued from barbarians if we can. It will be done, my lord. Well, up to now, things are looking pretty good. <laughs> but how you were saved from Troy, poor man, it'll do no good to know. But somehow friends long to hear the troubles of their friends. You ask too much for one question all in one go. Why should I recall the harsh Aegean, the shipwreck and fire sent by Nauplios on you buoyant shores, what cities of Crete and Libya I was driven past? No. If I should fill you up with stories, my tale of woe would burden me again. I should experience twice my voyage's pain. You've said more than I asked for. But tell me one thing, leaving the rest aside. How long were you consumed in salty wandering on the ocean's back? We were ten years upon Trojan land. On ship I passed through another seven yearly circuit. So many years, you poor man. But you've made a safe escape, only to come to slaughter here. How's that? <laughs> what do you mean? How have you ruined me, woman? Get out of this land. Run as fast as you can. It's the lord of this house. You'll die at his hands. What on earth did I do to deserve this predicament? You come as an unexpected impediment to my wedding. What? Someone here wants to marry my wife? Yes, committing an outrage against me, which I would have had to endure. A private strong man or one with ruling power? The ruler of this land, the son of Proteus. Now I understand the gatekeeper's riddles. Which barbarian gates did you stand at? These right here. He drove me off like a beggar. 
Tell me you weren't asking for handouts. <laughs> I'm mortified. <laughs> I wouldn't call it that. Oh, yes, that was the fact of the matter. Oh. <laughs> so, you know all about my marriage, it seems. I do. Though not whether you escaped his bed. Please believe me, I've kept my bed untouched and saved for you. Can you prove it? Most welcome if you do. Look at my wretched seats. Don't you see this tomb? I see a miserable straw palace. What's it got to do with you? I sit here as a suppliant, a fugitive from marriage. No altar, though. Or is it some strange foreign custom? This tomb has protected me like the gods' temples. Can we leave together? Sail back home? A sword awaits you sooner than my bed. If so, I should be the most miserable of men. Don't be ashamed now. Flee this land. Leave you? I sacked Troy for your sake. <laughs> Better that than for my marriage to kill you. Craven counsel, unworthy of Troy. You can't kill this king if that's what you're after. Is his skin so impervious to steel? You'll see, but no wise man attempts the impossible. Should I offer my hands quietly to the shackles? You're in dire straits. You need some scheme. Better to die fighting than by an action. There is some hope. Yes, our one salvation would be... Brian, fight or our clever politics. If the king <laughs> doesn't find out, you come. He won't know who I am. I'm positive. And besides, who will tell him? <laughs> <laughs> he lives with an ally. She's as mighty as the gods. Is he an oracle in the depths of his house? No, his sister. They call her Theonoe. A prophetic name. What can she do? She knows everything, and she'll tell her brother you're here. Then she will find me out, and we shall die. But perhaps we could persuade her by supplication. To do what? You lead me towards some hope. Not to tell her brother you're in the land. If she agrees, can we set foot off this sword? With her help, yes, readily. Without her knowing, though, impossible. This sounds like a job for a woman. Right. You can be sure I'll touch her knees in supplication. But what if she won't listen to us? You die. And I, poor thing, will be taken by force in marriage. You traitor. Force is just an excuse. No! I swear a sacred oath on your life! You mean you'll die and never swap beds? Uh, yes. <laughs> by the very same sword. <laughs> then I shall lie beside you. I accept your pledge. Take my hand on it. There. You are killed. I shall leave the light of day. If I lose you, I will take my life. Now, how shall we die to get some glory out of it? <laughs> Upon this high tomb, I shall kill us both. <laughs> But first, let us wage a most heroic fight, with your bed as the prize. Let me add it. I shall not dim the honor won in Troy, nor gain great blame by getting home to Troy. Greece. I, who stripped Achilles from his mother, I, who looked upon the slaughter of Telamone and Ajax and Nestor shorn of every son, shall I not deem it worthy to die for my wife? Yes, indeed, if there are gods and they have sense. The brave man who dies in war wears the soil lightly in his tomb. The coward is thrown out upon a barren ridge of rock. Good fortune give forth, O gods, this house of Tantalus, and let it change these ills for good. Oh, poor me, such is my fate. Menelaus, we're done for. The seer in the alley is coming out of the house. The bars being lifted, the whole house is resounding. Run! <laughs> She knows you've come whether she's here or not. Oh, poor me. After making a safe escape from Troy from that barbarian land, you've come here only to die on barbarian sword. You! Go out first with torches and purify every pocket of air with sulfur and flame, as the divine rule says to do. So we can breathe heaven's pure air. Now you, if anyone has 
violated the pact by treading with the profane step, passed the torch over it closely to clean it up so I can pass through. When you have finished the task the gods demand, carry the hearth flame back to the house. Hmm. Helen, what do you think? How have my predictions turned out? Your husband Menelaus is here plain as day, but he has lost both his ships and your phantom double. Uh, <laughs> Poor man, you have arrived here after escaping how many dangers, but you don't yet know whether you'll get home. Of course, stay here. <laughs> the gods are still arguing about your situation. <laughs> and today, Zeus has called an assembly to decide what to do. Hera, once your enemy, is now on your side. And she wants to save you and send you home with your wife, so the Greeks will learn that Paris' wedding, Aphrodite's bribe, was a pretend marriage. But Aphrodite doesn't want you to get home, <clears throat> so she will be shown and found out to have bought her prize for beauty with a fake marriage to help. In the end, I must decide. Either I destroy you as Aphrodite wishes, by telling my brother you're here, or, standing with Hera, I save your life, keeping my brother in the dark. He ordered me to tell him if you ever happen to show up here. Who will go and tell my brother the man is here? Telling him the news will keep me safe. Maiden, I fall around your feet, a suppliant, and I sink down wretched for my sake and for this man. After finding him at long last, I am on the verge of seeing him die. Do not, I beg you, tell your brother that my husband has come, wholly beloved, to my arms. Keep us safe, I beg you. Don't ever betray your pious duty just for your brother's sake by dealing in favors that are vile and unjust. The God hates violence. And he ordains that all men get their worthy possessions by their own power, not by forceful plunder. You see, common to all men is the sky and the earth on which we must live, filling our houses full, but never taking by force our neighbors' possessions and holding on to them. For me, it was at the right time, though hard, that Hermes gave me to your father to keep safe from my husband, who is here and wants to retrieve me. So how could he have taken me back if he were dead? And how could your father have given the living back to the dead? Now, consider the wishes of the gods and your father. Would the divinity and the dead man wish you to return your neighbor's possessions? Or would they not? I think that they would. So your reckless brother, mustn't hold more sway than your honorable father. And if you, who are a seer and a leading believer in godly affairs, corrupt the lawful conduct of your father to grant a favor for your lawless brother, then shameful it is to know all about powers divine, shameful to know what is and what will be, but not what is right. Save me, wretch that I am, from the evils I am buried in. There's no man alive who doesn't hate Helen. I, who am infamous throughout Greece for betraying my husband to live in the gilded halls of Phrygian Troy. But if I set foot again in Greece, and if they hear and see how it was by tricks of the gods that they were deceived, and that I did not betray my loved ones, they will restore me to my good name. And my daughter, whom no one will marry now, I shall give her in marriage, and after this life of bitter wandering, I shall take delight in the wealth still in my house. If this man had died and were consumed on a pyre, even if he were far away, I would go on loving him with my tears. But as it is, he was saved, and here he is. Shall I be robbed of him? Please no, maiden. Instead, I beseech you this. Grant me this favor, 
and emulate the ways of your decent father. For the noblest glory a child can have when she is from a good family is to attain the same high character as her parents. Now halfway done, your words call forth lament, and so do you. Now let us hear the words your Lord will say to save his life. I cannot force myself to kiss your feet, nor water my pathetic eyes with tears. Such degraded behavior disrespects the heroic stature I achieved at Troy. <laughs> True, I heard that well-born men have found relief when tears burst from their eyes, but this I don't accept. It offers no privilege, no honor, whatever. <laughs> I choose courage instead. But if you think it right to save a foreign man who justly seeks his wife return, Give her up and save me while you're at it. <laughs> if you don't agree, that's no new evil. The same old wretchedness would carry on, but you would be found a wretched woman. But true justice, which is mine, ours, will surely touch your heart as I declaim before your father's tomb. Venerable sir, you beneath the stone, I plead you, give me back my faithful wife, whom Zeus sent to you for you to save from me. I know now you cannot give her back to me, you're dead. But she will not deign to hear her father spoken ill, who now we summon from below, when once he was so glorious, for that is in her power. Lord Hades of the dismal underworld, you have taken many bodies, fallen to my blade for Helen's sake. You have been paid. So either send these brave men back to us alive, or force this maiden to appear as pious as her father. Restore unto me the bride of all my love. And let me tell you something Helen didn't say. If you two strip me of my wife, we are bound by oath. It is decided. First, maiden, I battle your brother, and he will die. Or I. That says it all. <laughs> but if his bravery fails to match with mine, and he tries to start two suppliants at his door, I shall kill my woman and myself, driving this two-edged sword into my heart's core. And then the blood will splash and drip upon this grave, and we shall lie two corpses side by side. The shame will cause eternal pain to you and your father, a life's reproach, your brother, won't marry her, no one shall. But we shall be together with the dead if I am not alive to bring her home. Why say this? If I cry weak woman's tears, I might win pity, but would get nothing done. Kill me if you will. You cannot kill your shame. But better yet, be persuaded by my words. Give in to justice and give me back my wife. To judge these words, young maiden, falls to you. Decide in such a way that will please everyone. <laughs> By inclination and nature, I'll do what is right. I care about myself and don't want to ruin my father's reputation, nor to do my brother a favor if it brings me publicly into disgrace. My heart's capacity for justice is great. And since this comes from my ancestor Nereus, I shall try, Menelaus, to preserve it. And if in fact here wants to save your life, I'll cast my vote into the same urn with hers. May Aphrodite be favorable, though she has never come to me, she'll try to remain a virgin forever. As for the complaints which you made by my father's tombstone, We could not agree more. We would be unjust if I did not take her back. For if he were alive, he would give her back to you to keep, and you to her. In fact, there are punishments for those things among those below and all those above ground. Although the minds of the dead do not exactly live, the remorse of judgment remains throughout the immortal upper air. Not to go on at length, then. I'll keep quiet about what you requested so urgently, and whatever become counsel to my brother's madness, 
I'll be helping him even when I don't seem to be if I make him behave honorably rather than dishonorably. You, too. Figure out some plan yourselves, and I'll stay out of the way and keep quiet. But begin with the gods and beg Aphrodite first to let you return home, and Hera to keep that way in mind which she has commenced to save you and your husband. And I promise my dead father to the best of my power to ensure that your name is never called into dishonor. <laughs> Good fortune never falls to those who prove unjust, for injustice sits the hope of rescue. Menelaus, we've been saved, at least as far as the maiden is concerned. The next thing is, you must come up with some ideas and frame a plan for our mutual salvation. Uh, but listen, uh, you've lived long in this house. I know well the attendance of the king. What are you saying? You offer some hope, as if you'll do something good for us both. Do you think you could persuade one of the chariot masters to give us one of the four horse teams? I might, but what would our escape route be, unfamiliar as we are with the plains of this foreign land? You're right. Useless that way. Could I hide within the house, cut the king down with my sword? That might work. His sister <laughs> wouldn't allow it, nor would she keep quiet if you were going to kill her brother. And we don't even have a ship to make a safe escape. The one I had was taken by the sea. Listen, if a woman may also say something clever, <laughs> even though you are not dead, are you willing to be named dead? Bad omen. I but if you think it'll work, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Report me dead, though I am not. Then we could mourn as women do, with shorn hair and dirges before that unholy man. <clears throat> Where's the part about our rescue? This plan sounds a bit old-fashioned. <laughs> I'll ask the king to bury you in an empty tomb, as if you died at sea. But how are we saved by burying me when we still haven't got a ship to make an escape? I'll bid him give a vessel to cast the finery of your tomb down to the sea's embrace. Great idea. <laughs> but if he bids you bury me on land, the plot is fruitless. We'll tell him it's not customary among the Greeks to bury on dry land those who die at sea. Set that straight, too. And then I shall sail along in the same boat to help cast in the burial goods. Yes, huh. you must be there, as well as your companions who survived the shipwreck. And then once we have the ship at anchor, we'll start to fight. Cut them down, man to man, sword to sword. <laughs> you must direct it all. Let's just hope for favorable breezes for the sail and a running ship. There will be. The gods will end my toils. But wait, who will you say told you Menelaus died? You. Just say that you alone escaped doom when sailing with Atreus' son and saw him dead. And these rags around my body will corroborate your shipwreck story. Great timing now, but was bad timing then. That misfortune may prove lucky. So, what? Should I go with you inside the house? Or sit here quietly beside the tomb? Wait right here. So that if he should try anything nasty, this tomb will protect you. And your sword. As for me, I will go into the house, cut off my hair, exchange this white gown for black, and drive my nails into my cheeks, bloodying my skin. There's a lot at stake here, and I see both sides of the scale. Either I shall die if I am caught in my cunning, or I shall save your skin and reach my fatherland. O oh, lady, who laid yourself in Zeus's bed, Hera, relieve us two men and wife in piteous flight from our toil. We beg you, raising our arms outstretched to the sky, where you inhabit the starry tapestry. As for you, daughter of Dione, Cyprian Aphrodite, who won a beauty contest at the cost of my marriage, may you not finish me off! Sweet. 
my father. Here at the very gates, Proteus, I laid you down that I might address you daily. Never once have I passed in or out of the house without greeting me, scion to sire, your son Theoclymenos. <laughs> Come, slaves, and uh, bring me the hunting dogs and traps into the royal palace. I have uh, kicked myself, often indeed, for not punishing wrongdoers with death. Even now, I've learned that some Greekling in broad daylight has strolled into our country and slipped past the guards, a spy, to be sure, or some stealthy hunter of Helen. But he will die if only he is trapped. Oh, oh no! It looks like the whole scheme is finished, I now find. She's left empty the tomb's comfort. Tyndarius' daughter is smuggled out of the country. The two arms! Remove the bolts, uh, open the cavalry stables, oh grooms, and draw up the chariots. I will spare no pains to prevent my intended bride from being kidnapped and carried out of this land. But hold it, oh. <laughs> I, I see the one we're after. Still here in the palace and uh, not run away after all. <laughs> You, why have you clad your body in black robes, swapping them for white? Why have you tapped your noble head with iron and shorn away your hair? Why do you wet your cheeks and weep with fresh tears? Is it by the urging of nocturnal dreams that you groan? Or have you received some report from home and lost your mind in grief? Master! For now I call you by this name. He's dead. My everything is gone and I am nothing more. <laughs> uh, in what crisis are you mired? What's happened? My middle is, oh, how can I say it? Is dead. <laughs>
Did uh, he leave your husband unburied or cover him with earth? Unburied. Ah, oh, I am wretched in my wound. And and for this, you uh, cut the locks of your golden hair. Yes. For he is still as dear to me here as he once was. Is it uh, really right to mourn this calamity? You think it's easy to <coughs> fool your sister? What? Oh, no way! No way! So, uh, so which will you, uh, will you keep living here at the tomb? I have been loyal to my first husband in fleeing you. Why do you taunt me and not let the dead man go? But no longer. Now start making wedding arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> Took long enough. All the same, I, I, I praise your action. Here's what to do. Let's forget the past. What's in it for me? Let's, uh... One favor, repay another. Let's make a truce. Be reconciled to me. I give up the quarrel. Let it fly away. Now, I implore you by your knees, seeing that you are a friend. What are you after, that you uh, reach out to me in supplication? My dead husband. I wish to bury him. What? A tomb for the lost? Will you bury a shade or what? The Hellenes have a custom for whoever dies at sea. To do what? The Pelops people are clever in such things. They hold burial rites for empty woven rows. Bury away. Raise a tomb wherever you like. Not so do we bury our dead sailors. Uh, how then? We are not up on Greek customs here. <laughs> they send out to sea all the items necessary for the spirits of the dead. What shall I offer you then for your dead? This man knows. I am inexperienced, fortunate, up till now. <laughs> Stranger, you have brought me a Pleasant tidings. Not for me, nor for the man himself, I think. How do you bury the dead who have perished at sea? With what magnificence a man can afford. Well, as for wealth, tell me what you want for the sake of uh, this woman. <laughs> First, there is a blood sacrifice to earth. Ooh, of which beast? You tell me and I'll comply. You decide for yourself. Any gift satisfies. Uh, with us uh, foreigners, a horse or bull is the custom. Offer such, then, though none that are not formed. Though we have not a few of these in our fertile herds. Then funeral cloths are laid despite an absent corpse. Hmm. What else is it customary to provide? Bronze weapons. I he loved the spear. <laughs> we shall offer something worthy of Pelop's children. We need ripe grain and fruit of earth also. Well, uh, well what then? Uh, how do you sink all of this into the swells? Uh, we need a ship with rowers at the splashing oar. Uh, and uh, how great a distance must one keep the ship from land? Just beyond sight of the crashing waves. <clears throat> but, but why? For, for what reason does Greece observe this law? So the waves don't cast the sacrifice ashore. You shall have a swift-running Phoenician ship uh, with oars. That is good. Menelaus would approve. <laughs> now, <clears throat> will you not be able to, to do all of this uh, without her? This is a job for mother, wife, or child. Mm -hmm. Hers is the hard duty, you say, of, of burying her husband? Final piety given the dead. Mm -hmm. Let her go. It's uh, my advantage to foster a dutiful wife. Come into the palace and select adornments for the dead. And I shall not send you off empty-handed from this land, stranger, after you have gratified her. Since you brought reports favorable to me, you shall receive, in place of these rags, 
food and clothing enough to reach home, as I now find you in such a wretched state. <laughs> and you, my poor dear, do not wear yourself away on the futilities of grieving for Menelaus. Life is for the living, and Menelaus has met his fate. Not even with your lamentations could the dead live again. love and cherish the husbands that you have, others you may discard. That's the best you can do in this situation. If I make it back to Greece in safety, I'll put an end to the slander spoken in the past, if you be the kind of wife that you should be for your husband. I shall. My husband will find no fault with me. You yourself, since close at hand will see it all. But, poor man, come inside and have a bath. Get out of these clothes without delay. I'll do you well. For you would be more inclined to doing what is right for <coughs> dearest Menelaus, if you get from me all that you should. <laughs> Thank you. 
inside the house. The daughter of Proteus, helping hide my husband being here, said nothing to her brother when questioned. He's dead and doesn't see the sunlight, so she said as a favor to me. My husband sees his chance very skillfully indeed. The weapons he was supposed to cast into the sea, he carries them himself, his noble arm through a shield strap, holding a spear in his right, as though joining in service to the dead man. Handily indeed he decked himself with weapons for battle, preparing to rout a foreign host by hand, when once we get on to the oared ship. Fine robes instead of shipwrecked clothes, I decked him out myself, and gave his body to the bath, a long-awaited washing in pure river water. <laughs> but she's coming out of the house. The man who thinks I do with me is ready to hand. Be silent for my sake. I beg you remain loyal and hold your tongues so that we may save you too someday if we are saved. <laughs> whether you are present or not. I fear that some passion will crash over you and urge you to hurl your body into the salty swell, stung by the ecstatic joys of your former husband. Far too much do you groan for him who is no more. My new husband, it is absolutely necessary for me to honor my first marriage and bridal companion. For love of my husband, I would even have died with him, but what gratification could he have if I lay alongside him already dead? <coughs> Let me go and give the funeral gifts to the dead man myself. May the gods give you all that I wish them to, and to this stranger here for helping to work this matter out. And you will have in me the kind of wife you ought to have at home, since you have done well by both me and Menelaus. For this affair is coming to some happy end. But someone who will give a ship so that we may haul this stuff, appoint him now so I may fully be in grateful debt. Go, you, and give them a 50 oared ship, a Sidonian one, and provide rowing vessels. Will this man command the ship who runs the burial rites? Certainly. My sailors must obey him. Repeat the command, so they may clearly understand you. Uh, I command it again. A third time, too, if you like. May you be rewarded, as may I for my plans. Well, now, don't ruin your complexion with too many tears. This day will show you how grateful I am. <laughs> The affairs of the dead are nothing but a useless pain. Those of whom I speak have some power both in this world and the next. You will have in me a husband no worse than Menelaus. You are not lacking. I need only good luck. It's yours, if you uh, show me a kind spirit. There's no need to teach me to love my loved ones, my lord. Do you want that I myself should help you launch the mission? No, no, no. Don't be a slave to your slaves, my lord. Very well. I'll let Greek customs be. My house is pollution-free, as Menelaus did not die here. Let someone go and bid my servants bring the wedding decorations into my house. All the land must cry aloud with blessed wedding hymns, so that our wedding Mine and Helen's will be envied. Now, stranger, go to the arms of the sea and give these things to her one time husband. And then hurry on home with my wife so that you may celebrate with me the marriage of this woman. Then head off home. Or stay here and be happy. <laughs> Zeus, if 
father and wisest of the gods, look upon us and bring an end to pain. When fate shipwrecks us against life's harsh rocks, assist us. Reach but with your fingertips, and we are raised to a triumphant plane. Oh, gods, I've cursed you, but I've praised you, too. I do not deserve bad luck forever, but to walk with stride erect. One little favor grant, and I shall be happy for what's left of life.
We were drawing down the Sidonian ship to its maiden voyage, 50 benches filled with rowers. There was task after task, one man pinning up the mast, another laying in the oar blades. The roll of white sail came into view. Rudders were lowered and yoked. As we worked, Greece, Menelaus's men, who had been looking for their chance, approached the ship clad in shipwrecked sailor's clothes. Quite handsome indeed, but rough on the eye. <laughs> Menelaus, the son of Atreus, seeing them ready, addressed them openly with treacherous pity. Miserable men, how and from what ship have you come? Some shattered Achaean craft? Are you here to help bury the missing body of Atreus' son, which Tyndareus' daughter, Helen, honors with an empty tomb? Crocodile tears were shed as they approached the ship with offerings for Menelaus' burial at sea. We had our suspicions and we worried about the crowd of painters on, but we kept our peace respecting your orders. By giving the form of the ship's command, you confused the whole affair. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, when the ship had been loaded, Helen, climbing the ladder step by graceful step, took her seat amidst the rowers' benches, hard by Menelaus the one they said was dead. <coughs> the rest, equal number down port and starboard side, sat man by man, swords clutched secretly under cloaks, and the curling waves filled with shouts as we listened to the boatswain's cries. When we weren't too far from land, nor near to it even, the rudder's guard asked this, shall we sail on still, foreigner, or is this far enough? The ship's command is yours. And Menelaus said, plenty far for me. Sword in hand, he moved to the prow. Standing over the bull to slaughter it, he made no mention of the dead man, but slew the beast and made a prayer. Sea dwelling briny Poseidon, and you blessed daughters of Nereus, bring me and my wife from here to Nauplian shores, safe and unharmed. Streams of blood, auspicious for the foreigner, were shooting in the sea when someone said, this voyage is a scam. Let's sail back. <laughs> you, command the starboard oars. You, turn the rudder. But the son of Atreus, standing over the slain bull, <laughs> shouted to his comrades, Why, picked men, the bloom of Hellas, do you delay to slaughter, murder, hurl from ship to sea these barbarians? The bosun shouts out the opposite to your own men. Come on, someone grab the boom as a spear. Someone shatter the benches. Someone take an oar from its pin and bloody the heads of these foreign enemies. All leap off straight away, some clutching oars, some holding swords. Blood floods the ship as Helen cheers them on from the prow. Where is that glory one in Troy? Show that to these barbarians. Some fell in the melee, some had success, and you would have seen still others lying dead. But armor-clad Menelaus, wherever he spotted a suffering ally, approached with sword in hand. So we slipped from the ship and the rowers' benches clear, and he, making for the helmsman, commanded a course straight for Helos. They took <coughs> in the mast and favoring breezes blew. They've gone from this land. Escaping death, I descended by the anchor to the sea, from which some fishermen lifted me and put me on their shores to report these things. Nothing is more useful to man than thoughtful skepticism. <laughs> I never would have guessed, my lord, that Menelaus would slip past you or me. Yet, here we are. <laughs> Ooh, wretched me! Taken down by womanly devices? My wedding has run off. If the, the ship could be captured by chase, I would spare no pains to swiftly overtake the foreigners, but... But now, I will exact vengeance on that sister who betrayed me, who did not tell me that she saw Menelaus in this house. Never will she deceive another man with her prophecies. Right, Lord, where are you headed? What slaughter do you speak? Wherever justice commands me, I go. So get out of my way. Will not let go of you. You are heading into great trouble. And will you, a slave, lord it over a tyrant? Yes, for I'm speaking with more sense. Well, that's not how I see 
it unless you let me kill my you. sister, so wicked, so pious, you who mean. betrayed me no, we'll by handing it. over my marriage bed to another man. The one with a better claim. Master of my things? Who? The one who took her from her father's arms. But fortune gave her to me. gave us birth along with Helen, who has fled from your house. You are angry about marriage, but it is fated not to be, and that your sister Theonoe made an offspring of the sea nymph, for she does you no wrong by honoring the just order of your father and the gods, for until this moment it was right that Helen should stay in your house. But since the very foundations of Troy have been destroyed, and the name Troy is given up to the gods no longer, she must remain in her existing marriage and go to her husband's house to live with him. And you, keep your dark blade away from your sister and consider how wisely she has acted here. We would have saved Helen long before now since Zeus did make us gods. But we can't overpower fate or the other gods who decided these things had to be. That is what I proclaim to you. My sister Helen, I say, sail on, and you shall have a favorable wind. We, the sailor saviors, your twin brothers, will ride our horses across the sea and see you safely to your homeland. But when you come to the turning point and end of days, you shall live as a god and enjoy the gifts of friendship which humans offer us, for that is Zeus's will. What is more, the place where Hermes, son of Maya, first brought you to safety when he carried you on that journey in the sky from Sparta and stole you away that Paris might not marry you. I mean the island that stretches along Acte is a bulwark. From now on, that island shall be called Helen by mortals, since it received you in secret from your home. And the God-given fate of the wandering Menelaus is to live on the island of the blessed for gods do not act hatefully toward the high-born, though their labors are greater than the uncounted masses. Sons of Leda and Zeus, I shall let go of our previous quarrels for your sister's sake. Let her go home, God's willing. And uh, I would no longer slay my own sister. Know you both that you were born of the same blood as a very fine and most prudent sister. Rejoice for noblest Helen's intelligence something lacking in many women. Divinities take many shapes, and gods accomplish things surpassing hope. Expected things don't come to pass, and God makes unexpected things happen. And, and that's, that's how this affair turned out. out. 